If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. If you enjoy getting outdoors, trying out new skills and pushing your boundaries and quite fancy doing that alongside somebody else who is quite new to this whole world of bushcrafting, then click that subscribe button, subscribe to my channel and you won't miss out on any of my future videos. In recent weeks, I've been on a week-long intermediate wilderness bushcraft course with Paul Kirtley and some of his team from Frontier Bushcraft. It was a fantastic week. If you want to find out more about what I did during that week, then check out the video that I'm both linking to in the top of the screen now, but also that I'm going to link to at the very end of this video. Had some real successes over the week. Lots of things that worked, lots of things that I want to, I want to work again. There were also a few things that didn't work, but I really, really wish that they had. One of them was not net making. I really enjoyed the net making. I got quite a feel for that and got into quite a flow and made quite an impressive net. But the only reason I was able to make a net was because Henry from the Frontier team loaned me a net making needle to make the net. The reason he had to loan me a net making needle to make the net is because after three, not one, not two, but three failed attempts at making the net needle, I just gave up, threw them up in the air, had a little bit of a temper tantrum to myself and basically said, it's beaten me. So I didn't actually make a net needle on the course, but I really, really want to because I really enjoyed the process despite having to repeat it three times and I really enjoyed the process of making a net. So I've come out to the woods today. I've got still quite fresh in my head about what it is that I need to do. I also took a photograph of the, the blueprint, for want of a better word, that's appearing on your screen now that Henry provided to us as to the dimensions of this particular net needle. So I've got, a, I've got a copy of that photograph to hand as well to guide me. I've come up to some local woodland today. The area that I'm in is absolutely awash. It is, it is overran with sycamore. And in fact, lots of this, not all of this that's behind me actually, but lots of this that you can see behind me here, a lot of that is just sycamore that hasn't had the opportunity to thrive because of the, it's, it's, just been, uh, it's just been encroached out by the rest of, of everything else that's here. So there's a decent green piece here. I'm going to take this down. I'm not just going to take it down for the net needle. That would be a waste. I'm actually going to harvest some other pieces from it as well to take back and to, to, uh, to wrap up, put in the freezer for some spoon carving at a later date. But today, it's all about felling this relatively small piece of sycamore here and, uh, and going through that net needle making process again. So why not join me? Just referring back to that blueprint that I showed earlier on, those dimensions that were shown were finger spans, so two, four fingers, four fingers, and then one and a half fingers. I'm actually going to go for there we go. I'm going to go for two fingers and give myself just a little bit of extra wiggle room at the end. So two, four, four, one and a half slash two. So I can now take this round off, all of this at the end where my pencil is now wasted. So I can take that off and can start to, uh, start to get down and dirty. As I'm sawing this excess off here, what I'm trying to do is I'm desperately trying to keep the end of this as, as square and as true as I can. Because the squarer and true it is, the easier and more stable it's going to be when I stand it upright on a log to baton it. So I'm trying to keep it as, as square and true as I can. I'm 
No, not entirely sure I achieved that, but it's close enough. Just looking end on now to this, this round of wood here, you'll notice that I've marked out the centre of the wood here. If I bring it a little closer, you'll see, I hope, that I've just scribbled some lines here to indicate that that's wastage. It's also wastage on the outside of the round here and the outside of the round there. So it's these areas here where I'm laying my pencil now and now that I'm really interested in. The inner and the outers I'm going to get rid of, I hope, if the batoning goes well. What you probably can't pick up on camera, because I can barely hear it, is as I'm batoning this I can actually hear the fibres sort of splitting and cracking. So rather than just blindly keep batoning through this, I'm actually letting the wood do some of the work and just seeing just seeing if that's going to help me get a much smoother plane if letting the wood do the work rather than me. Yeah, you, I very much doubt you can hear that, but I can just hear it popping and squeaking and cracking and splitting. So I'm going to let the wood find its own way and hope that that gives me less work to do shaving this into a nice flat plane in a few minutes time. Before I show you what I've done here, it's probably only fair, credit where credit's due, to say that I'm not the only one out in the woods today doing a little carving project as well. She's keeping herself entertained under the tree at the moment, scraping bark off the back of a piece of sycamore with the back of a back hole laplander, and then, then my attention will be much more closely on her when she actually starts to use her knife herself to do a little bit of carving. I think she's carving a wand or a double-ended spear as she uh, quite graphically explained it to me earlier on. Let's have a look at this round then. There's the round. There I hope you can see is, excuse the mark one pointer, let's get the old pencil out. No. Let's use this twig. There's the center that I said was wastage. There's the outer that I said was wastage. There's the outer that I said was wastage. You can probably see the baton lines here. So if we get rid of that top outer, if we get rid of the bottom outer, if we get rid of the centerpiece, what I'm left with are these two relatively far smoother than they were on the course pieces of sycamore. This one slightly thinner than this one. And I think this one to be to be honest is is closer to the thickness that it should be compared to this one. But I've carved two out because let's be honest with my track record on this I'd rather have one in reserve than be solely working on one in case that goes wrong. So two side by side but it's probably going to be this piece that I'm actually going to be working on this afternoon. Looking back at that blueprint again we can see that this piece of wood is it's probably the best part of four fingers wide there. It should actually be two finger widths and it's clearly twice that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this roughly the centre, two fingers width in the centre rather than the edges. My thinking is that the edges are more liable to distortion and cracking and warping than the centre. So I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, childish humour, I'm going, did it again, I'm going to take this, the, 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 um, the centre of this plank of wood and discard the outer edges. So I now need to mark up two fingers width, top to bottom, left to right, and then carve off the excess. I guess it's a good job that I didn't need that inner part after all, because somebody's requisitioned it. So I've got to this stage now, there's my two fingers laid on it. And yeah, I think, it, I think it's marginally more at both ends. But to be honest, I can always take that off. I can add it back on. So fractionally over the two fingers. If I recall some of the, uh, the, the net needles that I saw last week and that I used last week, 
this was very definitely the sort of the the, um, the left to right, the span of it. So I'm not overly concerned. This is this appears to be marginally more than two fingers. What I'm going to do now is to take my knife and just to start to carve along. And I'm trying to take this, get it into focus. It comes and goes. See if I can get this into focus for you. Oh, don't move a muscle. I'm trying to get that rough grained edge as smooth as possible. This side is certainly much worse than this side. And of course, by doing that, I'm also going to be reducing, fractionally but importantly, the overall depth of it as well. I think I'm happy with where I've got to with this. It's as flat as I can get it. I, I tend to find that as I'm trying to even out one high area, I'm just creating a low area and everything else looks, looks like the high area. I'm, I'm chasing the error, I guess you could say. But I think this is good enough. I think that once this has, has had the shape added to it and had some of the, the, the material removed as part of the, the netting needle creation process, I think, we'll be, I think we'll be on here. I just hope I don't look back and think I wish I'd made it thinner because once I start to, to move beyond this stage, it's going to be impossible to, to take extra bulk out. So... This is where we are. This is as brave as I feel. This is as thin as I feel brave going. Let's see what I can come up with. This is where I've got to so far. Let me just bring that in as close as I can and keep it in focus and in frame. So there's my effort so far. And again, I'm bringing up on the screen the, the blueprint that we were shown. The spiky end is two fingers then four fingers, then four fingers, then 1.5 fingers at this end here. So two fingers, four, four, and one and a bit at this end here. That's the thickness I've got it to so far. I still think it's a little too thick. It worries me immensely because I've, not as much as it's worrying Willow by the sound of it. It worries me immensely because of what I know is going to come next. I've got to this stage three times previously. So this is the fourth time I've got to this stage. And on all three previous occasions, like I've mentioned, it's split. Um, things I've done differently this time to help me draw straight edges on this, I've actually used something which to be honest, I was carrying with me last week. It just didn't dawn on me. The edge of my compass is of course a nice, clean, clinically straight edge. So I've used that to draw most of the straight edges on here. I've used it to draw the center line on here by measuring the, uh, the, the depth of this and joining the dots up. So again, I was carrying the kit with me, just I guess being caught up in the moment, didn't think about using the kit that I was carrying to make this job a little easier. What I now have to do, and I got my pencil on me, have a look, there we go. What I now have to do is this area here, I'm moving the pencil tip. All of that has to be carved out and removed. <laughs> and it worries me because it's that part that previously kept splitting on me. And it, it was splitting up in this direction, in this area up here. It was really ruining things. So to help me combat that, Everything I've done so far today, I've used my Mora Garberg to do it. I've actually brought out my Mora 106 or 120. I don't think it matters, but I've brought out a small Mora carving knife, um, which I think is just going to give me that little extra finesse. <laughs> I'm grinning because that's a word that was used a lot last week. It's going to give me a lot of extra finesse to carve out this section here. At least in my head it is. Let's get... Let's get the knife on the case and let's get my big clumsy paws on the knife and see if that, um, if that rings true. I definitely feel like a bit of a, a faker here because A, <laughs> I've never done this successfully and B, well yeah, B's the same as A, I've never done this successfully. So I'm not going to sort of talk through 
what I'm doing here and how I'm doing it because I'm clearly not an expert and also I need all of my cognitive brain processing power focusing on doing this and not explaining how to do and capturing but in a nutshell the area that I'm tracing around now with the tip of this carving knife I'm going to score along this with the carving knife cut down into the wood let me just hold it still go around it again cut down into the wood score around it and then I'm very gradually going to start to peel and pop and flake out all of this area in here that I've previously highlighted with a pencil all of that will disappear that's the theory hasn't worked to date I see no reason why it's going to work today which is why I'm going to kill the camera now get on with this or certainly kill the dialogue get on with this and fingers crossed um, in what will be in video time just a few seconds time I should hopefully be able to come up for air and show you what I've done here What I found quite interesting doing it this second time around is that there seems to be a lot of a very fine, I guess it's almost constructive splintering. As you can see, I'm sort of scoring, I hope you can see that, I'm scoring the wood. I'm putting stop cuts in at the either end of where those scores are. There's no stop cut needed at this end, as you can see, because it will just run off. And that's just a case of sort of prying I can show you where I've scored the wood it then just kind of I think you can kind of pick that up it just kind of flakes out in very small splinters so unlike get back a bit, unlike spoon carving where I guess you're making very deliberate cuts or very deliberate scoops and, and, and that um, everything is very Finally, it's a very deliberate this <laughs> maybe this maybe I'm doing this wrong. This feels a little more scrappy. Still constructive, you know, I'm, I'm constructively splintering this wood and, and gouging it out. But it it just I guess it's just a different mindset to spoon carving or carving anything else that I've done today. To get those uh to get the material. As you can see this side so far has gone remarkably well it needs tidying up it needs chamfering around the edges absolutely it does but in terms of the material that's been removed hopefully you can see now this area is missing and i'm going to replicate it here so we've now got this needle here will be gouged out at least that's a theory if i can finish this half as cleanly and and hassle free as i finish this half I think we're going to be in good shape for the rest of the needle. Hey, there we have it. And when I say there we have it, there is the bulk of the, the scrappy work done. It clearly needs tidying up. It needs those splinters removing. It needs chamfering. But in terms of the hard work or the, the tricky work, there you are, that beat me on the intermediate, so... So far I've got past that. I hope this isn't one of these stories where I think few have got past that and the next step it all falls apart. But um, I think if I can get this tidied up without screwing it up then it's just a case of carving this into a point and gouging this, this U shape here, now it's a U shape, out. I think we're in very good form. Remember earlier on in this video when I said that I'd carved this once 
and it split twice and it split three times and it split on the intermediate course so I was coming out here to do it again guess what it didn't split yay there we have it there's my net needle I'm confident I could use this right now to make a net but I'm going to go home and I'm just going to tidy up chamfer the edges make it comfortable to use in the hand make sure that as the cordage is, is, is slipping over this that there are no rough edges that could the cordage could get caught up or could start to fray the cordage or anything like that so a little bit of TLC on this when I get home with my Mora carving knife but essentially I, I think on this occasion I've cracked it there is my netting needle so now that I've cracked this fingers crossed I can get it home in one piece expect to see in the near future me using this to actually make a net if I can remember how to do that so thanks for sticking with this video a little bit of an unusual one more of a uh, you know I wasn't really an instructional video hopefully you've picked a few things up if you've never carved a netting needle <laughs> don't use this video as advice on how to do it but maybe this video has, has served as some inspiration for you to go and search out something in a book or a magazine or an article or a video or something like that if you fancy um, trying your hand at one of these it's a good exercise it was different to carve in many ways it was the same as carving a spoon very very similar technique same safety you know, considerations in other ways I think it was very 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 different in terms of the summer techniques that I used to carve this if you've enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up if you're not yet a subscriber I don't know what's going on in your life but come on get a grip of yourself and click that subscribe button thank you to those that already have why not share this video as well amongst your network so that other people can revel and rejoice in the fourth time lucky net needle thanks as always for watching folks and I'll see you in the next video very soon cheers